We want to thank all of our patrons. Every little bit really helps, and we really appreciate your support. Yeah, y'all are great. Door power off so I don't electrocute myself. And here we go. All right, so hopefully today is the last day of this nav panel wiring project. Um, yesterday, I uh, went through the slow process of wiring up every single switch on the breaker. Um, we'll drop it in a second and look at what we did. Uh, today, um, I have a couple more things to do here. I need to run some, like, some positive... Uh, power to this side of the panel so that I did actually run this this is the little fuse fuse block um, so that that's wired up at the moment uh, and that's going to get all the sailing instruments which includes the two different Ray Marine um, ST60 plus uh, readouts and the uh, AIS and the um, Actually, this stereo, the antenna splitter gets wired. Its power is joined with the VHF, and the VHF is going to have its own switch on the panel so that if we're sitting under anchor somewhere, I can have everything on the panel turned off and have the, the, uh, the VHF on if I want. So that's what we're looking at today. We're going to hook up the VHF. We're going to run all the antenna connections off of our splitter. Um, we're going to get the bilge pump mounted. I moved the harness yes, last night at the end of the night. Um, so it's all wired up in here. I just need to coil up sort of the slack and get it mounted in place. Um, and we're going to hook up all the fuses and all the, um, all the instruments that are going to this fuse block uh, we're going to hook up today. Um, and I think that's it. Uh, oh, yeah, and the stereo. So I brought like a little speaker that we'll use to test it. But uh, we'll get everything run to the stereo today as well. So, man, what a big project. Um, very overwhelming. It took me a year to get to this point. Um, after we get everything completely installed and, and it's all done, I'm going to go through piece by piece and talk about each of the instruments on the panel and uh, the products that I decided to go with and even break down when I bought them because a lot of the stuff I bought a year over a year ago so I tend to buy things when I have money to buy them and then I'll just put them away until I have all of the pieces in place to where I can do it um, while this is a frustrating process the one thing I can say about it is I don't have any credit card debt so I don't buy anything I don't have money for um, which helps me in the long run when we leave to go cruising we're not going to have any credit card debt to worry about we'll just you know have to worry about our, our daily expenses you know and, and keeping up with our cruising kitty and stuff so so we'll go through all that at that point uh, when it's all done so let's get to it let me walk you through what I did yesterday first thing I want to talk about I wired up my cool little bronze light. This light's from 1919, and um, I love it. I got two of them. I, saw, I also have a red lens one here that I'm going to be installing in the cabin, but I love this light. It's beautiful. I like the quality of it. Just into, I like old stuff. So I was smart enough to wire that up in the daytime so that I had light last night when I ran out of daylight. So here's our panel. I'm gonna shut my shore power off so I don't electrocute myself. And here we go. We got, this is our bus for our cabin lights. So anything I wanna add to the cabin light switch can run to this. So that frees us up a lot of chaos. Um, and there's a lot more to add obviously because I only have one light hooked up at the moment. This is our hot bus that comes off of the uh, battery so anything that needs to be a constant hot or you know that's that's there you know and we have the hots running off of here into our individual breaker switches and then all of our elements coming in to the um, breaker switches 
so that that switches each individual instrument or whatever needs the power um, I got let's see what we got wired up yesterday we got the main cabin light bus wired up yesterday we got the macerator pump we got the running lights steaming lights anchor light um, the autopilot hooked up and I wired the uh, like I said the fuse block for the sailing instruments there's nothing hooked to it yet but that's wired um, so today we're gonna knock out the VHF we'll probably get to the compass light just so everything's done the water pressure um, I'm actually gonna do away with that but I need to keep it until I get my uh, foot pump installed so we'll hook that up at some point um, in the next probably hopefully today, but time is always a th an issue We need the uh, systems first um, So we're gonna go ahead and get to work uh, The tricky thing from here on out is gonna be That I can't have both panels open at the same time So I kind of need to get everything run from this the port panel into the um, aft panel so that I can keep this thing shut and then do what I can do here because opening it and closing is going to make me completely insane. So um, let's get to work. Okay, so I do believe we're ready for the final little stretch here. Um, I did all the pregame stuff, you know, clamping wires, getting stuff pulled, and um, heat shrinking and all that stuff that doesn't need to be seen on film. It's the same thing over and over. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hook up what we can now there's some um, I've gone ahead and run the hot and the ground for the VHF I've run I actually wired up the bilge pump because it was stressing me out um, I've pulled through the uh, antenna cable and we're gonna hook that up and um, hook everything up associated with the um, antenna splitter and uh, hook up the stereo and like the USB ports that I have on the front of the um, nav panel here. And I hope my GoPro is doing okay for us today because it's been giving me a lot of problems. So hopefully we get all this done. So I've wired up. These are my USB uh, like out sockets. Um, there's three of them. I had a 12 volt socket That I was gonna have in there, but word to the wise like when I was pushing these on it was a little tight and it actually broke It pushed it right in so Learn from my mistake and uh, spread these out like I put something in there and bent them out on the next one So I went ahead and these are all USB I'll probably replace one of these again with a socket just so I have the flexibility of something different and this is a, a little bus bar. This is electronics, which is uh, associated with this switch here. And so anything, you know, uh, I'm basically what I'm hooking up to that are these. Um, eventually there'll be one in the cockpit I'll have hooked up to it. The stereo will be hooked up to it. And um, I can't remember if there's anything else, but that's what we're hooking up right now anyway. So those are hooked up and uh, just a little bit about this these are wired together in what's called in series the other option is in parallel which would mean they're like they all ran back to the to the main source or off of a there's like main source on either side and they ran but these are like jumping from one to another they all get power but this is in series and there's different applications where you'd want this and different applications where you wouldn't want this but in this instance it's perfectly fine and good and works all right next up let's go ahead and screw in this is going to our combo antenna on the stern which i actually uh, did a previously did an install video of that i'll put that link in the comments down below in case you're new to the channel you haven't seen it but it has a it's a combo antenna for ais but it's VHF, GPS, AIS combo antenna. So the line I actually have inside is it says AIS right here. I know you can't see it, but it's right there printed. 
So that's the one we're going to use. The other one I have bundled up neatly in the lazarette and um, screwed to the bulkhead so it's, it's all safe. That's for the GPS and that would be for if you have an AIS transponder. I only have the AIS receiver. So the transponder sends out to ships your location and your information and receives. Um, I can't afford one of those and I don't really need it. I mean, I guess it it has, it's definitely good to have, but they're pretty expensive. But the receiver is a must have, I feel like in, on yachts, if you're doing any kind of passage making. Because then you can see ships, you can set AIS alarms, um, you can see which direction they're heading, how fast they're heading, everything you need to know. So um, this is um, a must have. This coupled with a radar, which I have a used radar I'll be installing this summer. Um, that's one of the next big projects. So those those are two like important safety things to have on a yacht, I believe. So this is our KJM sp splitter. So this takes our little VHF combo antenna back there and um, it's gonna split up the signal into multiple usable sort of medium so there's AM FM stereo which is right here we can go ahead this is our JBL stereo we'll look at all this on the front panel too so you can see what in the world we're messing with but let's go ahead and so this plugs right into here so now we got our antenna for AM FM there this one on the label says AIS receiver and my AIS receiver is this digital yacht IAIS wireless AIS AIS receiver. This thing's pretty cool. Um, I used it on my Santa Cruz trip. We'll just go ahead and put this on right here. Now that's all fastened. Um, this thing transmits AIS wirelessly to like your iPad, to your computer, to um, your iPhone, whatever. Um, it also has this USB plug which I have a Macintosh, so I've never gotten this to work. Maybe you can, and I'm just a dummy, but I, I couldn't get it to work. But the wireless works for sure. Um, it does take, it's a little tricky to get the wireless to work. Like, you have to get all the settings just right. Um, so it, it was definitely, uh, took me a minute to get to connect, but, but now it works great. Um, the other thing I'm going to be doing soon, uh, can't get to it today, but I'm going to be hooking in the... Um, NMEA 0183 uh, from the VHF hopefully I can send the GPS data from there to this and then that'll send the GPS from this to my iPad and all that stuff I don't know if it'll work we're gonna see I'm not sure what all the NMEA out is on my VHF so um We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, but um, I have a number of things that are in MEA on my boat, um, but I know you need like a multiplexer, and I plan on keeping things real simple. So I'm gonna do that as like a separate little video because there's so little information about that I could find. Maybe it's just like I can't find any simple information that explains stuff. It's either nothing or like, you know, the, the bones of like the, you know, the data protocols and stuff so I'm gonna put together a little thing once I get it worked out and it actually works and then um, we can sit down and talk about my experience with it and uh, what what I was able to um, work out so now what's this here this is our VHF radio so this goes here I'm very excited about this radio And this has two, um, okay, so this has power that comes out of here. And the main reason I have this splitter is for my VHF. So I went ahead and just hooked up, spliced the power into my VHF power so that for this splitter, to be activated, I need to have my VHF radio on, which is, is not, a, I don't think it's a problem. I think it's perfectly fine. I thought about different ways to do it. I was like, well, I could put it on the um, electronics, but there's gonna be points where I wanna be under anchor. I wanna have everything killed on my boat besides my VHF when I'm listening to weather or other boats or you know, there's a storm or something. I know that there's gonna be nights where I'm just gonna be have the VHF on and nothing else. 
So I knew that this needed to be paired with this for sure. I don't care about the antenna for anything else specifically. And if I, if I need it for my AIS, I'm gonna have my VHF on anyway. So I, I do, I'm doing everything in my power to not have anything hooked up to the boat that's hooked up to the batteries as a constant draw. I want everything switchable besides the bilge pump. Like the bilge pump is the only thing that gets free reign to, uh, to the power 24 hours a day. Everything else is switched so I can just shut everything off. Um, and I want to do that for several reasons. One, you know, if I go away and leave the boat somewhere, I want to put as little draw on the battery as possible. Um, and, uh, and just, just to control your, you know, uh, the energy be being pulled off your batteries when you're underway. Cause I plan on being in far flung places for a long time. And, um, trying to run the battery as little, uh, run the engine as little as possible. So later on we'll be installing solar. So that'll be a big, big help. I'm gonna upgrade my battery bank, um, a whole variety of things. But for the time being, we're gonna see that if this works out to our, you know, to our favor and um, go from there. So I'm gonna go ahead, this is our power. This came with the um, ICOM, I think it's the 424, M424G is the VHF unit here. This came with it and it has a fuse in line that's near the back of the switch panel. So go ahead and it has like plugs that just snap in and they're all waterproof. Okay, so there's that and we got our switch here. Now let's go ahead and hook up our little stereo. So our stereo comes with this cool wiring harness thing. These are all the speaker connections for the um, speakers. I have two speakers I'm gonna be installing where the old switch panel was. Um, today I just have a simple speaker so we can test it out. Um, but uh, I've gone ahead and hooked up the, the hot and the ground and uh, all it does is just snaps right into this, which is nice. Let's see how it goes. So just, I mean, car stereos are made to like, you know, be fighting in these small spots, which is handy on a boat, that's for sure. And then this is the, I can't remember the model number. Oh, this is a JBL PRV175 marine radio. Um, it's got extra outs and everything. This is the one we're going to use today, but that has these little caps on it. It's got the, I, I have like a, um, like a breakout cable so there's USB and then an auxiliary in and I went ahead and mounted that input on the panel on the face so that you can um, that's a third party thing that you have to buy separately with with the one I bought um, but that's all installed so we'll be able to plug our iPod in or uh, plug a phone in and, and you know listen to the mp3s on there and this also has an inline fuse for the stereo so that's hooked up and uh, let's see, maybe we put our, set our panel up and look what's happening here. All right, there, there we have our panel. This is how new the ICOM is. I didn't even take off this little plastic thing. I'm so excited about it. All right, let's fire it up and uh, see what it's all about. We don't have this hooked up yet. So let's check the VHF because I'm very stoked. It's got power to it. Oh, there it is. Oh! Now I gotta register this thing. Um, I, I went online to do it during the government shutdown to get my number and I didn't, wasn't able to. So we're not gonna monkey with it right now because we still need to get that. But um, we know the VHF works. That's exciting. We'll go ahead and turn it off. All right. Um, we'll shut it off here. Let's go ahead and try our stereo. So it's hooked up to our electronics. So there's that. Let's see here. There's that. All right, so until we get our speakers hooked up. I think this thing needs an amplifier, so, um, for that speaker, but, um, 
So here's our, our stereo. It's got Bluetooth, it's got auxiliary in, and then the regular FM, AM, FM. Here's our little input I was talking about. So you can plug in auxiliary or, or uh, USB. Um, so that's cool. Let's see. So our USB here is working. I don't know why that one's not working. Let's hook something up to it real quick. That works. That one doesn't work. And this one works. So I'm not sure what's up with the middle one, but we'll figure it out. Maybe it's broken. Let me see. Uh, That works also. Boy, we ain't, we, there's no shortage of USB on here, huh? So, we're doing good. Let me show you how our iPad situation is gonna go. So I have this cool RAM mount, which I'm a big fan of. These RAM mounts, they're amazing. They're like the best product ever. Um, and this is a little base I bought. So you unscrew that. I like the spring side over here, so. You just push that on, and then you tighten it down so it holds its position. And then there we have it. And so that's how our iPad's going to go. Go ahead and look at this for real. That's how our iPad's going to go, and then we'll hook it into one of these to charge it keep it charged up we can move this around how we want and then you can easily take this out and take it into the cockpit so that's great I also have what I normally use if I can't get my VHF to give me my GPS signal through AIS I have this Garmin uh, GPS unit which is incredible they use these on airplanes and stuff um, and this thing just you can sit right there put it up here you can mount it up here wherever um, and then this thing for sure works as a GPS for the iPad um, does it through Bluetooth and it, you can just plug it in to charge the GPS unit or keep it plugged in really cool so everything except for the sailing instruments is hooked up which is good and those are gonna take a minute because I have to do these special little connectors because the wires are so small um, so pretty stoked it's looking good getting there well the nav station's done there's only a couple things I can't hook up at the moment but 95% of everything is complete um, here's my RAM mount iPad I have my USBs down here let's go ahead and turn some stuff on so we get the electronics on. That gives us power to our USB plugs and our 12 volt socket. Got our bilge pump permanently installed. Let's go ahead and put on our new VHF, which I have to register still. There's our new VHF. Let's go ahead and turn our sailing instruments on, which you can't see. There's our bilge pump working. And our stereo. So, there you have it. All I got to do is tidy up all the wires in the back. But everything's installed. I need to get a longer C-top cable to hook up this Ray Marine to the other one. The other one's completely hooked up. Uh, and I need to hook up the compass light and the water pump for the sink. Everything else is done. This opens good and happy. It's all secure. So I'm very happy with the way everything came out. Um... I'm glad it's it's nearly done. It's been a pretty brutal project. It's taken forever. And uh, next time we're here in the daylight, I'll take you guys through one every single element of the panel, and uh, we'll go through it all. Right now, I need to get home and get some dinner. Thanks for watching. 
If you enjoyed this episode, please give us a like, subscribe, and leave us a comment. It helps us a lot. Thanks again to all of our patrons. Your contributions help us get the boat ready for big things. Until next time. Oh yeah, it's uh, the feedback is great, and thank you for.